right, everybody, we're going to go ahead here and talk about dermatophyte infections. This is actually, despite its name, which sounds kind of weird, this, many of these disorders that we're going to talk about are actually fairly common, and they are definitely um, high yield for step two and step three. And you'll also want to know uh, a thing or two about these for step one. So this is very high yield information. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the i button on the upper right hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you who have already donated. And certainly feel free to subscribe to my channel and you'll get updates and notifications as I put more and more videos up. All right, now the dermatophyte infections, you probably know by more common names. They all start with tinea. And probably the most common one that you're going to run into is tinea pedis. And so we're going to start with that one, but we're going to go through all of these. And really, if you have any grasp of Latin, uh, all of these names should make sense. All right, so some general principles. Dermatophyte infections are fungal infections. So dermatophyte sounds kind of like it's a little mite or a little animal, right? And it's not. Dermatophytes are fungus. Um, there are multiple genera, so that's why we call it dermatophyte. Um, and you don't need to know anything beyond dermatophyte. Uh, these are fungi that cause infection of the hair, skin, and nails. And so you're often going to see this come up like a rash. The most readily available test and the one that's most commonly performed because it's so fast is a KOH microscopy. We take scrapings of the affected skin, or if this is a nail thing, we take nail clippings, and we look at the scrapings under the microscope. And uh, what we would expect to see with a dermatophyte infection is hyphae. Um, you can look up a picture of that if you want. Um, it's not going to come up on step two or three. Uh, some risk factors for these, uh, immunosuppression, poor circulation are risk factors, but most patients who get these are otherwise healthy. Uh, other risk factors depend on the location, um, so whether it's tinea pedis or tinea corporis, uh, there are different risk factors, uh, and I'll, I'll touch on those a little bit, but a lot of times, most of the time, these infections happen in otherwise healthy people. The most common treatment is terbinafine, but the tricky thing about dermatophyte infections is the root is going to be different, okay? So depending on the location, you may take this, um, you, you may start out uh, doing it topically, and if that doesn't work, move to oral, but some dermatophyte infections require you to do oral terbinafine immediately. Um, so you can see here, I lined those out and we'll talk about why that is. Okay, so we'll start with tinea pedis. This is also called athlete's foot. And this is an infection of the feet that's caused by a dermatophyte fungus. Um, so this commonly presents as an itchy foot and the patient will often, if they're able to look at their feet, um, they'll often complain of a rash on their foot. Uh, and the way this usually shows up early is that they get uh, this rash in between the fourth and fifth toe, but um, as it progresses, it can involve other interdigital spaces too. And that's what we mean by interdigital spaces. It's a space in between your toes. Um, as this goes on long enough, it starts to develop a moccasin-like distribution. So basically the foot up to um, the lower ankle. The best initial test is a KOH microscopy. And for treatment, we do topical terbinafine. Uh, please note that you can have a similar infection of the hands. Um, that's called tinea manuum, but it's a little less common. You treat it the exact same way. So this is the... Uh, the acute presentation, this is typically how it'll look early on. Uh, I can't really tell which toes these are, but they it appears to be the fourth and fifth uh, digits. This is the moccasin-like distribution. So you can see it's affecting the dorsum of the foot and um, the soles of the feet are probably affected as well. So this is more if this progresses and is not treated. Tinea cruris is jock itch. I've got a little bit of familiarity with this one. I went to the gym uh, a couple years ago. I switched gyms after COVID and uh, ended up with jock itch. It was not pleasant, uh, but that's what you get when you go to a locker room where it's damp and musty and gross. Um, so I don't go to that gym anymore. But anyway, uh, this is an infection of the intertriginous region of the, of the groin. So what we're talking about here is basically the leg pit. Um, so the area in between the genitals and the thigh. 
The symptoms here, redness, burning, and itching of that region of the groin. The scrotum is rarely affected for some reason. That probably has to do with the fact that it's a little bit cooler, a little bit less moisture there, so a little bit harder for the fungus to grow. Often this is chronic, so people will get it frequently. It kind of relapses and remits. The best test here is KOH microscopy, and we can also treat this topically, topically with terbinafine. However, just a note for clinical practice, not all patients who are getting topical ter terbinafine, even if that's the first line, not all of them are going to respond to it. Okay, so if they do not respond to it, then you'll move to oral. And that's what actually I had to do because I just was not responding to the, uh, the topical drug. Don't confuse this with intertrigo. Intertrigo is a different skin infection, and this is caused typically by candida. Um, this will also affect the groin, but it looks a little bit different. And you would, again, here, still do a KOH microscopy, but what you would find is hyphae and pseudospores. So this is tinea cruris here. What you can see are these kind of uh, indistinct margins. Um, what can happen then is as this goes away, uh, you can get hyperpigmentation. Um, so you may actually already see some of that because this tends to recur in patients. Um, so I think you can kind of see it here where there's you have this uh, redness on top of a little bit of hyperpigmentation. That is very classic for tinea cruris, and you'll run into that. Now this is intertrigo. You can see this is a little bit more angry, uh, but what you have here are these peripheral satellite lesions. And that's the dead giveaway usually that you're dealing with a candidal infection. Um, so it can look similar, but just pay attention. And if all else fails, do a KOH scraping and that will uh, give you your answer. Tinea corporis is also ca called ringworm. Uh, it's a dermatophyte infection that occurs typically on the trunk. Um, usually this presents as a round, scaly, peritic eruption with central clearing and very sharp but irregular margins. Again, the diagnosis uh, and the treatment here are the same. So this is ringworm. You can see why it's called ringworm. It tends to be round or ovular in shape, these little lesions. You can see the scaling around the, uh, the periphery, uh, but just general kind of redness. It looks uh, a little bit like psoriasis, I suppose. Um, you can see it again here. Notice how it's kind of rolled up and darker around the edges. That's pretty typical as well. Um, you can see this can be a lot of little small lesions or it can be larger lesions. Okay, now moving on to tinea capitis. This is an infection, a dermatophyte infection again here, occurring on the scalp. And what this will typically present as is these little bald patches with short hair stubs, or they may even uh, have some redness and erythema. They can also get cervical or occipital lymphadenopathy. That's kind of unique here. Uh, and that's just because there's so much vasculature uh, around the, uh, the scalp that if there is inflammation, it's going to cause a lymphadenopathy pretty easily. The diagnostic test here is the same. Here we give oral terbinafine. Now the reason that we're doing that, and as you're gonna see in some of these other tinnias, is that when you affect the hair specifically, uh, so if hair or the nails, so we're talking about two deep infections. If you get into the hair follicle, you can that, that fungus can grow pretty deep. Likewise with the nail, it's deep. And so for that, we need oral terbinafine. So you can see here, sort of bald patch, it's a little scaly here. You can see it on this kid too. Um, you can see the, the scaliness here in his hair. Fortunately here, he's got this nice black hair so you can see the scales. This is lymphadenopathy here. This is occipital lymphadenopathy and posterior lymphadenopathy. Not very common to have that, uh, but you may see it. Tinea barbe is uh, an infection that occurs on beard hair. So you're pretty much only gonna see this in men. Uh, most of the time, this looks very similar to ring uh, to ringworm, uh, but it occurs around the beard, and you may have some loss of beard hair too. Um, so it's kind of almost looks like a combination of tinea capitis and uh, and ringworm. Again, diagnosis here, same thing. Treatment is again oral terbinafine because this is affecting hair and nails. So you can see here, this tends to be a little bit more red in appearance, um, but you can see that it only affects around the beard hair. Sometimes people will confuse this with acne or they may confuse it with razor burn, uh, but again, you get those skin scrapings and that will help. 
Um, so here you can see um, some uh, flaking and scaling here, which is typical for tinea barbae. So you don't necessarily need to lose hair. Uh, but if you see this, this uh, kind of rash and it's limited to the facial hair, you're likely dealing with tinea barbae. All right, tinea unguium, also called onychomycosis, is an infection of the nails, especially the toenails. And that's because, you know, you're wearing shoes all the time. It's dark, it's damp. It's much easier to get infection down there. Uh, what you usually see here is thickening and yellowing of the nails. You can also see some, some subungual keratosis. I've got a good picture of that. Diagnosis is the same treatment, oral terbinafine. Remember, if it affects the hair or the nails, it's oral. So you can see some yellowing here of these nails. This is kind of actually a mild case, and you can see it's only affecting uh, digits one and two. Um, the, uh, the fungal infection can actually get so bad that it can compromise the structure of the nail. So you may see nail breakage as well. This is what I was talking about earlier. So this is that keratosis that you can see under the nails. That's kind of a giveaway that you're dealing with onychomycosis. So this is just a recap of everything we talked about. Again, remember, if you're dealing with hair or nails, you're going to need to give oral terbinafine. If it's skin, so tinea pedis, tinea cruris, tinea corporis, um, you uh, can just get by with topical. But remember, we will switch to oral if they do not respond to topical terbinafine.